Is it, yeah, Did the jelly? Tell me it wasn't oh, actually no. a jelly. Oh no, that one doesn't have the, the... That's just a plain old uh, everyday. Oh no. Uh, you know what? <laughs> no. What? No, it's not just a jelly. <laughs> it's special. Uh, it's it does still have a little cool. antenna. Yeah, it does. Antenna, it has antenna, little... Tentacles. I don't think it's the same one. It's not the same one, fortunately. You're of no interest to us. <laughs> Until someone wow. on the shore <laughs> says, that's a new species. Oh, like, what? <laughs> So interesting little ledge there. Sorry, Samantha, you were saying? Oh, just that it, uh, yeah, it takes a long time for results to be published. Um, and we do uh, kind of list all of our publications on the Nautilus Live website, and we'll post new publications on social media. Um, so those are the best ways to, to stay connected, check out the website, or follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok. Thank you. We also come out every year with a um, uh, kind of season summary, season overview. Um, it's a supplement of Oceanography Magazine. Um, it's available online, um, also linked on our website, and so you can actually kind of see uh, year after year summary of all the work we've done. And if there's any kind of initial results, we'll also publish those in that, um, that supplement magazine. And that's free, right? Free that is free, online. yep, yeah. free online. And you've uh, you've edited that volume before, yeah? Edited last year's, yeah. yeah. That was quite an experience working across the <laughs> across the expedition season to uh, with all of the lead scientists and getting them to get their stuff planners. in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a really great document to be able to kind of wrap up our season every year um, and see how. Our program has developed not only in the in the scientific side and the research side, but also all of our education programs and our partnerships with um, with the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute um, and also other you know other vessels, other programs. So, just a great summary of all of our activities each year. Yeah, big partnership with NOAA Ocean Exploration, who, who uh, supports many of these expeditions and conducts their own as well. Thank you. So when Nautilus chooses a region to explore, is it based on like the demand or the research of that area? So the re regions are kind of uh, determined in collaboration with NOAA Ocean Exploration. Okay. And we try and go to um, regions that they've just deemed a high priority, and especially out here, regions that are otherwise hard to get to for many vessels. Mm, right, um, oh, okay. And their ship is going to be out in this region in the next year or two, and very likely Nautilus will move uh, further west to U.S. territories on in the western a Pacific. That's, That's a really, really weird pattern. pattern. You know, is. one of the coolest things I ever saw in Nautilus was in, an acorn worm. Acorn worm. Yeah, those are bizarre. What? It was totally weird. It was this <laughs> big floppy thing, kind of uh, noodle shape. Oh shoot! Yeah, it was. I don't even know. And then we tr tried to sample it. There's. It's enormous. It, they look like big worms with. That's an interesting. Like uh, shovel like heads. Yeah, a shovel. I was thinking shovel and. Uh, <laughs> it, but apparently, there's a whole lot of it underground it was very strange if you look up acorn worm yeah we have some highlights on treat. the nautilus live website that are also what's the one that's off the coast of england that's like crazy long it's like 30 meters or something some crazy oh length. my goodness it's like the longest a sunworm i think maybe interesting are they only found in the deep sea or can you find them in shallow water too that I don't know, but I've only, the only one I ever saw was in the deep sea. Yeah, I think acorn worms oh, are wow. probably deep sea. Maybe some of our viewers in the UK can help fill in the, uh, the blanks there on that UK critter. 
I'm not going to say it. I'm not. Chat, we are currently about 2298 meters. Hmm. <laughs> What's, what did I miss? What's, hmm. what's so funny there? <laughs> Front row, please share. <laughs> Mike and I have a, a conversation about yeah. saying bless you when you sneeze. That looks like Because in here. Salud. Salud. I just, I just think it's odd. <laughs> so instead you stare directly at him? Yeah. <laughs> as long as you Is that better? Your eyes, I'm Actually, fine. that's a plectella. I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> I thought there was an explanation there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jules. Oh, nice. Which one is it? <laughs> I'm Ooh. so glad you asked. Because your guess is... Um, well, give me a little longer. <laughs> oh, I think it's similar to the ones we've been seeing. Oh, that's great <laughs> answer. <laughs> 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 Oh, yes, this is the coral of which we've been looking at. <laughs> I think this one is Norella. Uh, mm. Hold still. Um, mm. <laughs> oh, I... All right. Trust but verify. Connor Johnson on the chat, I think, is saying that the acorn worm has a name, scientific name, Yoda Purpata. No. Yo what? Trust but verify. <laughs> I think this is Snorella. <laughs> you said it online. Oh, it's it does man. look like that. Yoda huh. Propata. Look at yes, that. Yes, yeah. that's what it looks like. Wow. Uh, Connor is completely right. <laughs> Purparata. 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 Wow. All right, so we get on this one? Get on this so one. Okay, it's one species of acorn worm discovered oh. in the Atlantic. Uh. Another. Named in 2012. Oh my gosh. Wow. Any Great later, man. it would have been Grogu Purpurata. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I was here within my own little. <laughs> Is that box a spoiler? <laughs> <references>. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about me. Oh, there's a little burrow of some sort. Ooh. A couple of them. A couple of mounds. Well, we're going to find one of these worms one of these. I hope we do. Zoom in, Dave. That'd be cool. Chat, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions, send them in. Our team would be happy to answer them for you. Is this one of possibly another burrow? Yeah, something. It doesn't have the radiating. Something's in there, though. That's true. I'd say antlion. <laughs> hmm? That's what? An antlion. Antlion, yes, ant. those are super cool. What's an antlion? It's this it's a larval, yeah, uh, I forget. But yeah, I don't it know if it makes a pit, and then when the ant walks by, it kicks sand up to make the ant fall in the pit. What? And if and you, then, what? Yeah, if you stick a little <laughs> twig like down in it, these little kind of pinchers come up yeah. from underneath. What? It's, super, it's like a <laughs> creature from Dune, kind yeah, of, totally like, but on a small scale. Dune. Okay, yeah, that's freaky. Yeah. I'm learning so much today. Where do you <laughs> where do you see antlions, Robert? They're all over Southern California. Really? Okay. I've yeah. never oh, seen them. Wait. I seen them in the They're not Grand Canyon. They're like where we are. Like On you could encounter ocean? this <laughs> <laughs> On planet Earth? Yes. <laughs> no, like <laughs> Like really? this is something that I can encounter in my life like in person. Yeah, but it, like it's like this big. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's tiny. Fine. The, the like the the little pits, like maybe a half inch or an inch across. Yeah. Ant lion. Ant lion. Ant -lion. I'd hot. like to point out that when you search it, the first things that come up are: Is ant lion poisonous? <laughs> are there ant lions in the U.S.? And then, can you have an ant lion as a pet? Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> as a pet, it's, it's not harmless. ordered. It's not, I used it's to harmless. collect them. Yeah, they're really? cool. Yeah, when I was a little kid, they had was into the ant lions. <laughs> ant lions are absolutely harmless. I really okay, can't believe. Yeah. Unless you're an ant. <laughs> 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 
That's <laughs> true. This is fascinating. This is biased. <laughs> Ooh. Are they just in warm climates? They must be. Yeah. Well, you got the internet. Well, yeah. Samantha, I got a question for you as a former Hello. Uh, Nautilus okay. science <laughs> communication expert. Uh, okay. Uh, one of our scientists ashore once would ask the question of why not broadcast to Twitch, like in addition to YouTube? Yeah, that's a good question. We have um, broadcasted to Twitch in the past. Um, I I think th there's yeah been experiments with it. It's just not something that we've dedicated staff time to yet. Um, we actually decided uh, the team decided to go towards TikTok, which has been wildly mm -hmm. successful. So that's kind of where the, the efforts have been focused. There you go, Tyler. We also this got that. Seems like chat a Twitch too. opportunity. Ooh, look at that nice sponge a ahead of us. Oh, great sponge. But that would be a good question for Megan when she's uh, back on our watch at some point. Ooh, that's a pretty one. See, you Plactella. Yeah, these ones are really cool. They look like woven. Oh no, what did I do? So sponge in Olelo, Hawaii, the Hawaiian language is hu'u akai. Mm. Hu'u akai. Hu'u akai. Hu'u akai. Is that a small shrimp? Mm, maybe. So Annie and I uh, were mm -hmm. working on the translations for... Oh the folks that we didn't get before, Samantha and Paola. Mm -hmm. And can you remind me of Samantha's? <laughs> Why do you say it like that? Samantha's is, what should we call it? Oh no, I know, sorry, I'm spacing out here. So Paola is um, Matasue Sue. Matasue Sue. Whoa. Whoa, I and like then that. Light Titi, oh wait, is it, Yal uh, Light Titi is for Samantha. One more time. Yeah, like Titi. Yeah, like Titi. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, like Titi. Jim and Dave. Now, is there a meaning there? I, <laughs> I made <laughs> Annie come up with these. Uh, what? <laughs> Samantha's They're fake. Is, is little squid. <laughs> I was like, yeah. why are you laughing? And uh, <laughs> and Paula's means like I can't I'm so see. Sorry. Or I can't <laughs> <laughs> she keeps forgetting her class. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I made her do it. I made her do it. Honey, how you could, how you could say these so serious? <laughs> I know you really did that. Well. <laughs> so wow, that was fantastic. Um, that's great. Thank you. I will keep that forever. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Thank you for that's sharing good. this with the yeah, internet. <laughs> Continuing on. Okay, continuing on. Can we just call them all Primnoid for now? <laughs> oh no, Jules. You know what? Let it go. You know? <laughs> that one looks more Norella leaning. Oh, that's funny. Samantha and I had very different advice. I was like, let it go. And you're like, don't, don't give, give up. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got this. Either one. <laughs> Bridge, Nev. So, the way that I'm telling them apart right now. 30 is meter that zero five five. Calyptrophora looks a little like like neater, a little more um, manicured. Um, what's it called? Uh, <laughs> Organized, so regular. Like a, a canyon thing coming down. Is that anyway, no, I have a system that I'm going what with. What do we got? What do we got going on there? I Symmetrical. Like you're taking the oh. flocculants as like a personal attack. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it makes, if somebody just. <laughs> Jeez, that guy is not a drive. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll just mention it every five minutes or so, <laughs> so that everyone knows it's not you. <laughs> I mean, there is like a little bit of a, like, 
I mean, not really. I I don't know. I think it's just an active area. It's like we're I don't know. Mount the chat the lasers are ten centimeters yeah. apart. But it. I don't know. You'd think that they're too, so. that the corals and sponges would love bad, this. See, right. You're seeing more of them. Look at all this fade Maybe it's floating too around. much. Oh. Right. Mm, like and they're being smothered. Or being swept off the rocks what's when they that? try to settle, right? Is this some oh, other area? Oh. When larvae try to settle? Oh, what's all this? Is that, what's is that poop? Is that poop? <laughs> uh, oh, 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 what sponge. is I can't. that? Look at that. Oh. That is a healthy holothurian. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I searched up the, the worm, the mm -hmm. that picture also came there. up. Is oh, interesting. Did? Yeah. So he's having, wow. he's loving life with all this stuff in there. <laughs> I'm not even sure that thing up top is the. No, I don't. That's know. another. That's just a bigger extrusion. Extrusion. Thank that's you. That's a good <laughs> word. So, not the word that was coming to mind, but <laughs> <laughs> those look like the. That's uh, not my first rodeo. <laughs> corn pops <laughs> at breakfast, don't they? Jules, can you elaborate? We have new viewers asking, does the light or noise cause harm to nearby organisms? Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of research on this, but from what we know, the effects are minimal. Um, we also scare a lot of things away before light could even really affect them because they can hear us. Um, so there's plenty of organisms that are around us, maybe watching us <laughs> that we're not seeing. Um, and then you also have to consider that things in the deep sea um, aren't accustomed to light and so don't have like sensory organs like us. Um, so most likely they have different ways of sensing things right. that don't rely on light. So for the most part that we know of, no. Awesome, thank you. For those just tuning in, this is a particularly flocculent area. It's <laughs> not something that we wow. have done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Pre-recorded statement. We'll play every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it looks like it's getting steep right here. Oh. <laughs> Word of the day. Oh. Me cute. What? Meat's cute. That's what? not a word. I didn't think it was. It's Meat a phrase. cute. It, there's a is there a space hyphenated. In it? That's hyphenated. It is hyphenated. Yeah. That seems like they ran out of words to For real. say. What does it mean? It's like a cute, like first. It's the story of how you met your yeah. your partner. That is oh. like you know. I ran into her car, and she <laughs> punched me in the face, and then we <laughs> fell in love. Oh, oh, happy God. ever after. <laughs> you zoomed in? Looks like a dead sponge to me. Oh, well. Or it's like those, those brittle stars yesterday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> dead, well, towards the ending of our shift. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting on the same coral. <laughs> they seemed well acquainted. <laughs> right, <laughs> except one. Except that one. Except for that Except one. Just one poor fellow. Hey, you never know. It True. Could have chosen to be <laughs> out there. Oh you was, was that at Dead Walteria? Yeah. Moving on. Bridge nav. That was different from your usual bridge nav. Oh. So that was like, let's get out of here. Bridge nav. <laughs> uh, three zero meters, zero Ooh. five five. Hello, Hello Could this be the <laughs> culprit? <Jeez. laughs> Oh, wow. Nope. Norella. That's the common name is Jules Bane. <laughs> Jules Bane. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, the feeding. Wow. Wow. That's so beautiful.
And we do have a question from chat. Um, I wonder how can a mound or volcano collapse slowly? Is it by micro earthquakes chipping away or the rock layers sinking and bringing it down? Subsidence. Yeah, so <clears throat> it would be more like the first statement that there would be some surface that would form in the volcano, like a failure surface. Right. And then instead of falling all away all at once, because the surface has a lot of friction on it, it would just slowly slide down through a series of earthquakes. Oh. We are currently 2265 meters. Annie, if you get any comments from someone who said they were at the Bishop Museum <laughs> tonight, Kay. I had an interaction with them, and I okay. said I would, I, they should tune in, and I would shout them out if they, if they tune in, if they <laughs> okay. sent a comment in. So keep your eyes open. Okay, but where's that at? Honolulu. Uh, oh, nice. I got to see uh, Daniel's son was there, and they were, it was very, talk about meet cute, they are both wearing the same Aloha shirt. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, and um, is the white we're seeing on the ocean floor, is that like marine snow or some mix of the two? Um. Of like sand? Layers. Oh, the the sediment that we see. Yeah. It really did. Yeah. That's on top of the. Bit. Yeah, yeah. It's it's probably largely composed of marine snow, so stuff that's falling down from above. And is not being stirred up in any way by the pilot who is <laughs> <laughs> driving perfectly over this. But that was fascinating, right? We just yeah, went through this right. like band yeah. of extreme extreme flocculence extreme. <laughs> nice. extreme that's with a capital x <laughs> there's a follow-up <laughs> question how long does it oh how long on average it does it take to biodegrade at the depths we're exploring in? Hmm. oh well so there is some biodegradation but um a lot of it gets preserved and buried by additional sediment and it's kind of one of nature's kind of carbon sequestration oh, okay. methods, right? So it, it uh, locks it away on the seafloor and and, uh, and there it sits. Awesome. It's really interesting. We're not seeing corals or sponges. Is the marine snow the reason why we think? What do we think? Um, not necessarily. Okay. I mean, that's something we're interested in is um, determining like patterns of corals and sponges in the deep sea. Um, so there's a lot of biodiversity on seamounts. That's one of the reasons why we're exploring them. Um, it could have to do with um, elevation, like on the seamount, it could have to do with depth, uh, temperature, um, a whole whole host of things, a whole gamut, if you will. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's something that Brian is interested in, Right. Uh, Brian Kennedy. He is looking for a relationship between coral and sponge species and uh, geological features on seamounts. Um, 
marine snow, like nutrient availability, does have some impact, I would imagine, where things can exist in the deep sea. Um, corals and sponges are filter feeders, so they rely on particles flowing through the water column. They can't move and catch their food. So the marine snow that falls to the deep sea is their food source. And so you'll find them in areas with higher flow because that means more food flowing through them. Right. Thank That's you. another reason why things are so slow growing. Right. Because there's, right. you know, very little food ending up down there by the time it's gone through the entire water column. And then also, uh, well, this is a statement, but I'm going to turn into a question. Can you say that we are watching petrol grow just in the super early stage of that process? Watching what? Petrol. Oh. Uh, just we're just watching the early stage. Yes. Oh? Uh, just a little worm trail, sorry. <laughs> False alarm. <laughs> oh, but there's something there. Oh no, um. another little worm trail. <laughs> Never mind, I'm gonna stop poking. <laughs> um, kind of, yeah. The Yes, that this is very similar to the early stages of Hydrocarbon formation, right? Yeah, a little disc. It will take uh, a number of other things to happen in, in order to make it some hydrocarbons that are accessible. Right. Um, so it would have to get heated up. It would have to be in an enclosed kind of reservoir at? with some barriers from it moving away. This right. got blown up when. Uh, Oh, our motion kind of stirred up that little, not that little disc, oh. but uh, that little disc. Not yeah. sure what it is, though. Mm. Could it What's that be circle a thing? Bio Egg -like. Maybe a hold fast that came off. Yeah. Uh. Like, oh, like a crawl, crawl base? Hold or fast. a sponge. Yeah. Uh, or a sponge, yeah. Looks like it could be That would be a carbonate. good word of the day. Hold fast. Hold well, fast. I was about to ask, I, I've only heard it used for kelp. Can it also be used for animals? Yep. Interesting. Hmm. Verifying that. Ooh. Man. Yahoo. Ooh. Oh. Um, yeah, a hold fast is a root-like structure that anchors aquatic sessile organisms. Hmm. Somebody take off up there? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was definitely <laughs> <yeah. laughs> It wasn't, wasn't me, eh? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what? What's our special effects for the dramatic entrance? <laughs> you know, don't story? pay attention to no. that. Like <laughs> Look at how much there is. <laughs> it's way out in front. I'm driving ahead. Mm -hmm. You know that there's an all-seeing eye, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Can't pull a fast one on us. <laughs> that would have been all the beans on that thruster. <laughs> <laughs> thruster beans. Thruster beans. It's very flocculent stuff, though. I think that's the word of the day now. It is. Do we have a science word of the day? Flocculent. 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 <laughs> okay, I cannot pronounce it. There are words in English that I stay away from. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What are the hard ones? The what? What ones are hard? Okay, I'm going to write them because them? I, I cannot pronounce them, but you can pronounce them. There are Spanish words that I avoid. Yeah, this mostly one because I cannot of the R ah, say. Cheat. Oh. Yeah, because I pronounce it, it sounds yeah. like the short way of saying that. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Yeah, this, this is another one, because it sounds like, like, I'm saying, <laughs> like I'm saying this. Oh, yes. Yes. So Focus I is another topic. Yeah, one. so I just say concentrate. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> concentrate.
something off to um, to the left. Well, there's a little, there's a little sponge there. Got a little little activity over here. I feel like that might nope. be. Nope, I was tricked again. Oh, bamboo whip. Bamboo whip. <clears throat> Are we looking at it? Sure. Sure. We haven't looked at anything for a while. Partly because um, it's been so dusty. Actually, why don't we sample this? Wow. Oh. Wow. And where, while we're here, maybe we'll find a rock, would like too. to get some more bamboos. Bridge, Nav. Yeah, it looks like a good place for a rock. Mm -hmm. It's pretty Hold position. uncharacteristic of you to get a rock so um, early. Early in the dive. Yeah. yeah, I like to wait till the end. Yeah. What's that? Uh, right. maybe a hydroid. It looks like a little spider. Whoa, we're farther away than it looked. Ship's holding. Uh-oh, gonna get dusty. So this thing swimming away from us, no doubt. Connor on chat said we were Paolo was entering the phonetic danger zone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just the scientific word of the day. Uh. I cannot pronounce the first part <laughs> because it sounds like one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> uh, where'd it go? To the right, right of the lasers? To the right of the lasers, okay. Right. Too far over this way. Are we taking a part of this? Yeah, snip it, snip if possible. Slurp? Can we slurp? Mm -hmm. Or is it too stiff? We might not need to slurp. Like Well, I, I guess, do we want to take up a bin with True, with this? okay. Yeah, we can slurp it. Snip and slurp. You want to set up for a slurp there, Mike? Yep. This could be um, lepidosis. Zoom in, Dave. Can you repeat the ID, Jules? Lepidosis. L E P I D I S I S. Thank you. Uh, like a few inches, a slurpable chunk. A lot of the bamboo whips we've been seeing are lepidosis. Interesting. Do we have a, um, a jar that's gone into? Jar number? Only jar number seven is occupied. Okay. Very good. Yep.
This would be sample one, two, zero. Okay. One, Ooh. two, zero. I going to Everyone gets a free breakfast when we hit one, two, zero. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, can you pull the, the jars on this lower left hand? Nice. Oh, I got it. Oh, that's so, something to do. So here's what you go to hotel, yep. cameras, and then select uh, bucket. Okay. And turn off starboard rail. All right. Okay, so. When we get to sample 149, I wonder on whose watch, yeah? Ooh. I hope it's on our watch. 149? We just yeah. need to collect 29 samples in the next two and a half What's hours. What's up with 149? Uh, That's our cruise ID. Oh, yeah. Yep. Go away, dirt. Yeah, something must have just come up. Yeah, some other <laughs> ROV. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me like that. You started it. You didn't say go by? Jar number one is... Uh, Zoom is in, Dave, so we don't have to look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding the evidence. Oh. Just brush it under the oh, rock. I need more leash. That's what's happening. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Always a problem. <laughs> Something else. It is. Look at... Look at... Atalanta. Bouncing all over and the place. Ten meters uh, off the... <laughs> We got, we got so what right. pin are we on there? Is that, Playing it close. Is that bucket one? Bucket one. Okay. Thank you. And then turn on the start gun. Don't be uncooperative here. Oh. What section do you want, Robert? Five or ten percent. 80. Uh, 80? Yeah, why not? Uh, 80. Eighty percent. Ooh, Ooh nice. let's go. There it is, it's in. Is that jar one? Yep. Yes, so uh, that was very smooth. Okay. Coming down to zero. Hey, can you zoom out, Dave? All right, so Back to before you flush. disappear. Oh, rock. Yeah, I'm kind of looking at this guy. Can right we get uh, Herc a little closer to Atalanta first? Yeah, we're too much oh, rough tight. You guys are killing me. Uh, <laughs> also, so I'm where gonna where are we going to find floor. a rock? <laughs> it was the perfect <laughs> cantaloupe, uh, <laughs> slanted cantaloupe. <laughs> Actually, some of this flocculence <laughs> caused by Atalanta. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything but. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Next, you're going to say it's caused by Adam. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's Adam. It's verbal flocculence. <laughs> <laughs> This is the SPL channel <laughs> is experiencing a lot it's of verbal <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't even say when that. Adelanta is surging up and down. It kind of like... <laughs> Are we there yet? Blame yes. it on the uh, pilot that's... I'm experiencing uh, a lot of mental <laughs> flocculence right now. <laughs> 15 meters away. Okay. That's true. Now we can't find a good rock. Uh, these rocks, these <laughs> rocks are horrible. <laughs> Swear. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fish. Hadrosaur. Oh, yeah. Let's go. You're looking at him? Nah. We don't care. Okay, Adam, any good rocks you like? Yeah, they're all good. Uh, Potato? Uh, Potato? Potato. Yeah. Ooh, tom I, tomato. Here we go. Here's a few right there. Yeah. Three potatoes. I don't like those smaller potatoes. I don't think they taste as good as the regular sized potatoes. It we depends you how you mean cook in oh, real yeah. life yeah. or are we talking about the in real life? What are we talking about? Okay. No, real life you don't potatoes. Like real life potatoes or fingerling. No, I I don't like the fingerling. Huh. Too much skin. 
That's where the nutrients oh, are, yeah. as my parents told me. Yeah. Are we going for the one in the middle here? Uh, Largest potato? <laughs> I... It's over I 10 centimeters. Yeah, I actually like the nearest potato. Interesting. This, that potato. That's not a potato. <laughs> I know, but it looks a little more angular, I think. It yeah. also may be stuck to the stuff underneath. Maybe. Let oh, we need more, more grippage here. It's more of like half a loaf cake. Yeah, yeah, like a pound cake. Yeah, but like half. Ooh, pound cake does sound good. Yeah, it does. A lot of oh, things. Nice. Good. Let's it. go. Could be a candy corn. Oh, candy oh corn. We, be, we should be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I cut that candy corn open and it was, it was perfect. Really? Yeah. What was in there? Basalt. Oh, it was a piece. Interesting. Yeah, it's got a little crumbly. Uh, it's kind of thin. Oh wow. Uh, I'm taking it. Keeping Going with it. it. Starboard box. Yeah. You got A, B, or E, F. What is a turtle back? You ready for your sample cams? Yeah. Go for it. There you go. Uh -oh. So then we got to switch the back. I do the opposite back. Rail. Okay. Turtle back. That's there where it go. just got the, the skin part. Yeah. Tyler yeah. in the chat is saying that he used to trade we, for the turtle back for us. Yeah, but I think I don't he, they're that. all coming. I think they're all coming from the big potatoes. Yeah, because you can't make fries out of those little potatoes. Yeah, exactly. It's like a taste thing too. I guess it's not just the skin. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're when you uh, grow up, you'll develop a more refined palate for potatoes. <laughs> 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 and thrusters killed on the side. Oh, did they? Uh, really Actually, I, think I already yeah, I left it okay. off already. They're, I like right. when there's right. skin in the mashed potatoes. Okay. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah, I agree. Those are good ones. If they're russet, right. Right. I like that. See, there's sort of like a... Mm, I don't know how to describe it. This is an A? Uh, well, hold on. Is it fit in the smaller bin? Yeah. Okay, why don't you be kind and put it in D. D. Not that D. That's that D. <laughs> Careful, Samantha. <laughs> Is that A? Okay. Let's now I'm policing go. you. Is that the tray coming in? <laughs> All right, our work is done. We can just hover awesome. here for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> talking nah. about potatoes. Talking about yeah. potatoes. Or we can explore the seafloor. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we have a reputation I'm trying, to I'm obtain. Trying, I'm trying to get Annie's intonation. Let's go. Let's go. Let, no, oh. I, I think it comes down at the end. Let's go. <laughs> no, that wasn't it. No? Andy, can you do it for us, or now you're thinking about no, it too much? <laughs> oh, let's go. Let's no. Let's no. go. Let's That's go. the same. No. You kind of got to drag the the O. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. That was close. Close, close. close. Andy, can you do it for us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's too much pressure. <laughs> Here, we'll get, we'll get the RV set up, and then it'll just be a natural segue into... It's TJ's birthday, everyone. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's close. Actually, TJ could comment on the potato issue. Oh my gosh, he oh, would be our oh potato yeah. expert. He's a, he, he did, potatoes. yeah, and he yeah. said uh, he had some names for ones I'd never heard, like yeah. the really? Queen's Spud or something like that. <laughs> I don't think it was Queen's Spud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you go, you go hotel? <laughs> Little Yukon gold potatoes with a little butter and salt on them. Mm -hmm. Those are so good. I'm a big russet fan. So you can only have one on at a time. Yeah. 
That's cool. That means that, you know, the potatoes get distributed evenly amongst the peoples. Yeah, I guess that's, yeah, yeah. We should talk, you know, if we get Megan and TJ going, because Megan's from Idaho. That's the potato state right there. Like, if we're talking mashed potatoes, I don't, I don't want them to be like that golden color, like I, you know? Uh-huh. And if they're all with the little potatoes, that can be a little gluey. Is your thruster back yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. There's just like idea. a more yeah. distinct taste to the smaller ones, and I don't like so it. See, halfway to Atlanta pilot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're going. Yeah, let's let's keep on moving. If only someone would just say something. To keep going. To keep to going. Yeah, we're going, going now. So. Yes. Yeah, well. let's keep going. Mm -hmm. On to the next wait point. Let's. Annie, come on. Let's <laughs> Annie. Check out this Annie. Annie, I'm stuck on this one. Let's, um, I just can't let's, remember the next part. Let's what advance. Is it? What Bridge is it? Nav. Let's, let's uh, move. Let's uh, progress. Let's go forward. Wait, let's, let's, continue. Continue. Uh, let's focus. <laughs> let's continue. <laughs> Chat. Tyler's dropping some uh, <laughs> potato recipes here in the science <laughs> chat. Ooh. Red, Red potatoes, potatoes for mash. This is the science little content pinch we've been of dill, <laughs> heavy cream instead of milk. Mm. Wow. Ooh. I'm down. We got but what about the oh. butter? Heavy cream's got... got oh, Adam, one of your uh, subjects. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Reports from the front, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that that's that looks a lot like that one that looked like an eyeball. Yeah. 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 Sure does. <laughs> Our ID skills for a keynote term. Didn't is that a anemone next to it? Right um, up top. Could have been a holotherian. No, no, I think that was oh. Oh, oh anemone. anemone. Yeah, you're right. Adam, what do we say to have time to ID it? Was aha. And then, oh, that's the oh place. yeah, aha, uh -huh. yeah, that's what we say when we're trying to stall for time. <laughs> <before we're laughs> ah. Oh, interesting. I recognize bridge that. nav. <laughs> I kind of feel like was there not a time where we stopped to watch an <laughs> urchin like try and capture something? Yeah, yeah we, we did. Zero zero five we five. did, and it. You yeah. did. We're, oh, we're three zero meters zero five five. Why? why we don't make ground within this watch. We're like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Is that rock slowly eroding? We make eroding? highlights. <laughs> we make highlights. That's what we make. If you're oh curious, gosh. it did not eat the thing. But guys, I did see the video highlight from the Chana Cops, you know, when we were, we were pulling back and yeah. and, and it was so cool. Oh, yes. Okay, we captured So that. it did see some? You did it see did. Some? Yeah. 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 No, I believe me. Oh. It did like a, like a little suck and then its whole Lunge. face yeah. <laughs> moved forward. <laughs> what? Uh. That's neat. Okay, ship moving. Thank God Atalanta stopped <laughs> stirring up the sediment. <laughs> 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 Two days in. <laughs> this is your life now, Mike. <laughs> it's like, TJ, I will trade you back. <laughs> you can have my shoes. And <laughs> I mean, deck frog's not even being maintained at the moment. Yeah, there's some concerns. <laughs> TJ's mom was worried about him. She thought on that, the watch. Uh, yeah, that we he were got bad influence. No, nah, <laughs> she thought he got demoted and had to be out. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Promoted in our hearts. Yeah, but then she'd been pretty excited <laughs> that she'd been wor that he'd been working with Jacques Cousteau. So that was. Yeah, that more than makes up for it. 
Wait, who's Jacques Cousteau? Like, yeah, you don't guy. know? No, I know who he is, but <laughs> is he on the ship? This, this is uh, the ghost of Jacques Cousteau? TJ's bomb. <laughs> Are you looking at chat over there, Dave? Where are you hearing that from? <laughs> I heard that from TJ. Oh. <laughs> Robert really wants to know what the chat is I saying. I do. <laughs> Why are it mine? It's killing me. There's a <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Annie, what have you got? Zoom on. Everybody, everybody gets <laughs> to look at what's going on but me. This oh, is oh we finally <laughs> found a coral, and I'm so excited about it. <laughs> I'm so excited about this coral. <laughs> Where? Let's, Let's go. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Wait, I thought we dropped that. <laughs> no, we're no. waiting. No. Oh, my bad. I was so trying to go. entice you. No, my, my bad. Can we zoom in, Dave? <laughs> that was oh, perfect. No. Oh, Adam. 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 <laughs> Adam. Mike, keep it under control up there. <laughs> You're 20 meters uh, away. I in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> 20 meters away. <laughs> I don't like this place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The sanctuary is like everywhere but this hill. <laughs> <laughs> see the instant replay from Atalanta Camp? <laughs> I believe this might be our slowest speed yet. Oh, oh man. Yeah. No. Really? You I just don't believe, challenge me. <laughs> no one tell me what it is. Are we still ch figuring this out? Oh, the added really challenge at? of all the muck in there? I'm going to call it Norella. Yeah, we're good. We got it. Okay. Thanks. Chad is asking, how often do we come across unidentifiable fish in life or species? Hmm. Were there, was there a time when we, we couldn't um, identify a species on board and we had to wait to go ashore? Oh, yeah. You oh know, oh, with, with corals, sometimes it's hard to tell because they look so similar. Like, sometimes we don't know if we've found a new species until we do DNA analysis. Oh, okay. Um, and you have, if you ask the geologist, everything we see is something I can't identify. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a cuskeel. What? Ooh, what? look at that. Everything's probably a cuskeel. Oh, yeah, everything's oh. probably a cuskeel. It was an old tree. Well, you know, the, the cool thing is when we saw that jellyfish, you know, that we've seen with the long tentacles. Right. You know, no one on board really new but because we're on a ship with telepresence we could work with all our scientific scientists ashore to help us know that that indeed was something really cool and i don't think there's anyone you could bring on board who would know everything that right. you would see so it's really beneficial to be able to access kind of the full scientific expertise of the community yeah that's a really big part of this like I'll see something and be like, whoa, I've never seen that before. What is this? And then Brian will be all nonchalant, like, oh, yeah, that's this thing. I've seen it before. <laughs> Been there, done that. But, yeah. And like, it hurts a little inside, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> a little part of me dies every time. <laughs> um, but um, in all seriousness, we do um, rely on our, our scientists ashore for identifications. Um, Isn't Brian still on the ship, though? <laughs> Yes, Brian is still what? on the ship. What? I'm I talking think, more generally. I think we've made some real steps Just today. Undermining so. me again. <laughs> Always gaslighting Bridge me. Bridge <laughs> This is a pretty fun watch. Get me out of here, Bridge. Yeah. Three zero meters, zero five five. <laughs> well, so, Samantha, I get the, like, the three zero meters, but what is the other... Um, numbers represent. Sorry, did you say my name? Yes, or yes. Oh, oh, no, you got to say her. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> What's, how do you say ship move? <laughs> what was oh. it? No, I just wanted to hear my name again. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, well, it's set up the, uh, it's Fe'e La Titi. Fe'e La Titi. Oh, it's I thought Fe it was Fe'e? Yeah. 
Oh, I thought it was Ye. Okay, Fea La Titi. Yes. A little squid. Okay. So <laughs> about the numbers. Yes. Fea La Titi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I get the three zero meters, but what about the rest of the numbers? Is that like a heading or? Yeah. So three zero meters, as you said, is the distance that we oh, want to go. Yeah, right. And the other number um, is actually the bearing. So the heading is, is the direction ah. the ship is pointed. Okay. And the heading of the ship won't change because they want to keep um, it kind of centered within the forces of the current and the wind. So the heading won't change, but the bearing, um, which is the direction the ship will move, will will be what, what that number is. So like the heading of the ship is uh, right now about 55 degrees. Um, and the ship, if I put in a move for, um, let's say, like, 150, which is directly south of us, uh, it will, the ship will just move down, but the heading will remain pointed to the northeast. Does oh. that make sense? Yes, yes. I was using it's my hand, but realized cool. that you probably can't see it from where you are. <laughs> the pointy end of the ship. The pointy end, <laughs> yes. Thank you. That's so cool. And what does the ROV do? You tell us. <laughs> you tell us. <laughs> Usually not listen, but. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you what it doesn't do. It doesn't stir up sediment. <laughs> Samantha, can you zoom in on high pack? Sure. We're sending that out. To oh, cool. Okay. Yep. So you can see uh, yeah. the ship here. Right. With, um, and so, yeah, the, the ship's heading, which is currently pointed to the northeast, won't change. But if we wanted to move up down north south we would just um move send in a uh distance and then a bearing range and a bearing um and then behind here are little symbols that show where hercules is um and argus so hercules is the red uh track line here and green is the uh atalanta track line not to put you on the spot but how do we know where uh hercules and Ar and atalanta are that is a great question um <coughs> we have two systems for navigation, subsea navigation um, that are part of the USBL, the ultra short baseline system. Um, one of, they're, they're both um, kind of acoustic, uh, uh, acoustic navigation systems, so sending little pings of sound um, from a transponder to a receiver, a transceiver. Um, one of the systems is communicating from uh, vehicles to the ship. And one of the systems on Hercules is actually um, communicating from Hercules to the seafloor. So we're getting information bouncing back, acoustics bouncing back off the seafloor for one set. It's called the DVL. And then I don't know what DVL stands for. Doppler, Doppler velocity Doppler. log. Great. Good thing everyone here <laughs> was ready to recite. <laughs> um, and then the USBL system uh, is the, the navigation from uh, for location positioning from uh, Herc to the ship. And the same on um, uh, Atalanta just has the, the USBL, I, I believe. So Atalanta can't go further or over Herc, right? Yeah, so that's a separate, um, that's being tracked separately. I, I have position information, um, but it's, it's kind of 2D. Uh, the depth, uh, Monitoring depth is actually done by the Atalanta pilot oh, okay. and the Herc pilot, but maybe our Atalanta, Atalanta pilot can uh, talk about what he's been looking at to make sure that distance between Herc and Atalanta is safe. Yeah, so I'm checking uh, the distance between us uh, located on, on uh, the screen over here, but also looking at our delta uh, between Herc and Atalanta and then Atalanta's altitude as well from the bottom. So. Just making sure that Atalanta stays off the bottom, uh, doesn't get near or cause any kind of uh, sediment to drop down onto Herc. <laughs> <laughs> That's really bad. <laughs> it's been uh, as well as uh, keep an eye on our tether uh, to make sure that it doesn't get wrapped around. Uh, and then, yeah, keep us uh, keep us off the bottom, but also keep Herc within. But what's the other important function? that you have to do to keep or to, to assist hercules pilot with the operating no <laughs> to complement the hercules pilot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no job your main function is to get the shot 
<laughs> yes, the shot. <laughs> <laughs> Keep her in the, in the frame. You have to get good pictures, oh good video. <laughs> That's what you're shooting for. Bridge Nev. Now, <laughs> please get us out of here. Uh, Adelanta, <laughs> Adelanta doesn't really drive per se, right? It just is three zero meters zero five five. Well, it, it can rotate, uh, right? I rotate. I rotate. But he can he can zoom in and yeah. and turn his heading and and change the delta to get the dramatic shots and stuff. Ooh. Oh, as oh. demonstrated on channel two right now yeah. on that last live. If the ship wants to cooperate. Which, well, oh, geez yeah. Louise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sometimes when yeah, when we're in heavy seas, it's too bouncy to be zooming in. <laughs> you just get a crazy make you Lose your mind in a shot. <laughs> but it's really this kind of the images together are really cool, right? Because yeah. you, can s you see that Atalanta is the one Oops. feeling the heave from the ship because it's connected to the cable. And then the tether between them allows uh, Hercules to be isolated from that motion. That's and a great stay shot. pretty stable. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Lai. So some of our best highlights have been like that that view mm -hmm. one of my favorites was a um we called it sponge sponger no sponge landia sponger yeah who yeah. was who was driving uh argus at the time i don't remember are you trying to compliment yourself <laughs> was it you <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> mike that's your cue uh, spongetopia okay. well, oh spongetopia thank you um <laughs> That was uh, in um, Hyderabad, off of uh, the northwestern, uh, northwest North America, off of British Columbia. Um, anyway, Wait, did you just say North America and Paraguay? No. Okay. It didn't sound like you said Paraguay. Hyderabad. 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 Um, the yeah, Spongetopia was a field of amazing glass sponges, basket sponges, trumpet sponges, some of which were the same height as Hercules. And Argus got the most incredible shots of, of Herc, like kind of going on a walk through this garden of Spongetopia. And it, and it was actually, yeah, Argus was actually lowered. It was at a deeper depth than Hercules yeah. for that shot. So who was on Herc? I don't know. You just remembered your <laughs> <laughs> the glory of driving Argus in that moment. Oh, and uh, another question: um, Can Samantha figure the ship's position using a sextant on deck at noon? Did I just get invited to a duel or something? Yeah. That's ah. not very <laughs> specific. Wait, hold on. Now oh. it says I'm supposed to take this cloth yeah. glove. And <laughs> I don't think you know how to use a sextant, do you? Well, geez, that's <laughs> quite an assumption. <laughs> do you? I have learned how to use a sextant, but really? it's been a few years, so oh. I don't remember. But uh, oh. we do have a sextant on board. Um, oh. It does not often see the light, I will say. Anyone else in the van know how to use a sextant? I do, because I teach students how to do it. But nice. That's it. Why do you do that? Because uh, we talk about navigation in an intro oceanography class. Oh. Ah. And then I tell them, you can forget about all this stuff because you don't need it anymore. You teach them <laughs> slide rule, too? <laughs> I'm like, abacus. Uh, everyone gets an abacus. Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, let's keep going. It's actually more, almost more an introduction Bridge, no? to the solar system, because this is an intro class, you know, and, you know, why is the... Three zero meters uh, to zero five five. Why can you get your position from looking where the sun is, and how fast does the Earth spin around, and right. why does the moon, you know, come up, why do the tides change in time every day, and all that kind of stuff. So do you remember the old Alvin navigation... Slide rule? No. LBL oh. was in play when I was oh. there. <coughs> First there. They used to just get the slant range from the sub. It would ping 
at a known point and uh, and they would measure the slant range Ish. and then use the little slide rule to get the the uh, horizontal range yeah. and was it a unique solution or did you have to like kind of then you had to figure out yeah which side of the baseline you're on yeah yeah so it was it was LBL but without the right the computers what does LBL stand for? Long baseline. Oh. Yeah, okay. So what's the difference between the ultra short baseline and the long baseline? Distance of baseline? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> so with the LBL system, we would have to go out and deploy transponders on the seafloor. And you oh, had to have, so you you had to have at least two of them deployed. I think it's wow. an anemone. So an every anemone. time you went to a new site, you had to deploy LBL transponders Interesting. first. Interesting. Where's that at? I don't see it. Can you go uh, circle right again? There. Or a tunicate. I think it's a tunicate. Really? Oh, yeah. maybe. I see. So it would mean that you had to go out on the deck and you had to get these transponders ready and the ship would steam over the spot where you were going to drop the transponder, and you would have to put a float out. Yeah, you no, you deploy the transponder, and then you wait and feed out stainless steel wire as the ship was steaming, and then and then you go past the point, and then you drop the steel plates over the side. Mm, that oh were the yes. wait for yeah. the transponder. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so and then you had to survey it in. And then you he would spend hours surveying it. <laughs> yeah. Such a, Jeez. A long Every process. time you and then you had to recover those transponders and the USBL was such a revolution. Yeah. Oh, so that looks like that donut. Can you zoom uh, in, Dave? Sponge kinda. Like Atlanticella? Mm. Oh, yeah. It kinda does. So, oh, yeah, just it a, is. Yeah. Aww. The donut sponge. Yeah, and you had to like plan out where you're going to deploy these transponders to give you the most kind of coverage. Coverage, yeah. yeah. You'd be on which side of the baseline you're on. <laughs> Fun. Yeah, you didn't uh, you didn't cover a lot of ground doing that. Mm -mm. Okay, this I think is we're good, good on this. Thank yep. you. Okay. So the ultra b short baseline system measures the the time it takes for the uh, signal to come in, but it also looks at the angle from a transponder array that's all in the head. You know, so it has a, an array of transponders, and, it and they're like they're like you know one or one foot across you know 12 inches from each yeah. other or something like that so you got to measure like extremely small yeah. time intervals yeah and very precise you know the, the yeah That's the cool. angle that it comes in at hmm. interesting so it's not as uh, potentially not as accurate as the long baseline but in in the practice, though, it is. It is because yeah. the, remember how long those tethers were for the yeah. LBL beacons? They were spinning around down there. Yeah, they would drift with the current, oh, so they weren't exactly yeah. where you'd serve it. You know, if the current shifted, they were on like a hundred meter tether because you had to get them up off the bottom, so they right. weren't you know shadowed by the bottom. So it, whatever conditions were would affect. Yeah, it would your shift navigation. the position of Yikes. the surveyed. Transponders. Oh, wow. <laughs> Cup coral, anemone on the top left. Anemone. Anemone. All right. Moving on. Zipping. Keep moving, science. Yeah. Bridge nav. We can add uh, three zero meters to uh, zero five five. 
I am curious. In the last two hours, how far have we moved? <laughs> don't. Don't. Do you want to no? be disheartened? So no. Early on the watch? I don't want to know. <laughs> okay, let me see. We had a little bit of marine snow from Atlanta. <laughs> so yeah, a lot wow. of. Um, remind me of right, the word. Come up. Excuse yeah, me. Come in up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that can be true. We must have started here. Looks like we have a coral coming up. Ooh. Where, where, where? Uh, just right there. Uh, it looks the stick dead. The stick a pathy thing? Um... No, I think it's probably a dead bamboo. We can uh, move on. Moving on. <laughs> it's a little sad looking. So I think we've moved. Okay. Oh. Oops, sorry, <laughs> dead bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> 440 meters at the end of this step. So we're at about 220 an hour. That's right in our ballpark yeah yeah, ballpark. yeah that's yeah. not bad better than yesterday yeah it was better than yesterday right. was pretty terrible it was rough <laughs> <laughs> so what's our standing in the highlight reel though i mean how many highlights do we have for our watch yeah probably well another oh. lepidosis at least a couple We have on the Nautilus those foam, foam vases, uh, foam cups that we can put on the Nautilus and then it compresses with the pressure. And when they come up, it's just going to be a little cup. Crush cup. Do, Do we have styrofoam cups? That's the one. But we want to put them on Hercules and not Nautilus, <laughs> please. <laughs> or not Hercules, but yeah. or Atalanta. <laughs> They're not crushing. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. We've definitely crushed styrofoam cups in the past. Uh, we've also Ooh. gotten creative with some other things like styrofoam heads. Uh, on our shakedown cruise, I finally crushed a styrofoam duck decoy that was on board for about <laughs> a year because we couldn't part with uh, Data Duck. But Data Duck Data finally duck. Uh, finally made the trip down. So if you want to see Data Duck, it's in the Data Lab, uh, and it's about. <laughs> This much smaller than it previously was. <laughs> About half the size. We could crush cups on uh, Nautilus now. On not on Nautilus. Yeah. Where? In Ooh. our we have a can cup crusher. crusher. We have a cup crusher. That's a can crusher. No, that's <laughs> no we have a cup crusher in the ROV shop now. You have a pressure uh, oh, chamber? Yeah. What? Oh. We do. That's interesting. Yeah. To what uh, pressure depth can you test? Uh, oh. I think it can go to like, I think 4,000 meters. Really? I think. Oh, yeah. wow. That would be a very a tiny tripod cup. tripod fish. We're going to have to Where? try that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Fish. And I keep seeing those patterns in the sand on the seafloor. Can we zoom in, Dave? Is that a oh. small jelly? It's a little tiny fellow. <laughs> Did I just uh, oh make it? Oh. Swim away. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. yeah. And I've made Escape it disappear. <laughs> Too much flocking. Right oh, wait, there, there it is. <laughs> oh. Zoom is it again, really babe? small? Yeah. Well, I thought we were ten, just like really 10 centimeters, away. maybe. <gasps> oh. oh, wow. I love their power pose. Standing yeah. there. The power pose. Yeah. 
That one's it's dark. Not, it's not up on its things. <laughs> Legs? <laughs> yeah. Tripods. Oh, it is blue like the other ones. That's pretty. Bridge, Nav. Oh. Yeah. All right, fine. We can add uh, three zero meters to zero five five. I like the way it swims. Is it? Looks like it's struggling. Hard for a fish to swim uphill. Is it harder to swim uphill than downhill? Oh. Or are they neutrally buoyant? It's a good question. They don't have swim bladders down here, do they? No. No. Oh. But they could be pretty close to the density of the water. I suppose. Hmm. I suppose if that fish sits on the seafloor, then it's denser than the water. So it must be harder to swim uphill. Apparently they can be, um, have neutral buoyancy and they use fats and oils instead of the fish bladder. Mm -hmm. Some things have compressible lungs. Oh. What do you got over oh there? Nice. <laughs> Nanya, that sounds tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Please let it be lychee gummies. <gasps> yes. Oh. That's all right. I'll have to bring I the lychee gummies back this week. I won't dip into your peanut butter pretzel supply. Oh, that makes some sort of. The what? Oh, oh! <laughs> I was just gonna put one in my hand. But I'll let you. <laughs> I'll let you do it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can see them on camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got a question. Let's go. What is your least favorite holiday to be at sea for? Oh. I think for me it's Christmas because yeah. we have the longest one in Puerto Rico, so it's really a big thing. Okay. I think for me it's Thanksgiving. That's mm. kind of my favorite uh, holiday. Mm. But you, Jules. My first time at sea. <laughs> oh, me too. Arbor Day. Yeah, me too. Memorial Day was really tough for me. <laughs> yeah. Memorial Day? <laughs> Wasn't that it's Labor Day? Wait, oh, what, what was the day? That it was, was, uh, it was it Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. Memorial Day. That's the... I was right. Memorial Day. Yeah, Memorial Day was... Uh, probably the, the worst th holiday you've Probably the worst. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how many Christmases and... Thanksgivings have you missed Z out on there? Zero, because it's their first cruise. Zero. But yeah, I, zero. I, I really yeah. don't like Black that. Day is coming I'm up, so. Right. Oh, how many have you? Adam? Me? <laughs> I've, I've missed uh, probably like two. Two. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty picky when it comes to <laughs> cruises that you don't do happen that. at those times. Uh. I think Mike has everyone beat. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, how many? <laughs> all of them. Uh, all of them. Yeah. Out of sea, or just or just in general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think Antarctica Let's counts. Let's start with sea. Antarctica <laughs> counts. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Antarctica counts. <laughs> yeah. Antarctica. That's a little unfair Field though, because you can only be there during that time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think I have somewhere around fourteen or fifteen Christmases out at sea. Wow. 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 So. Yeah. 
although it stinks to not be with your family, it can be pretty fun on a ship because everyone kind of comes together and yeah, you have your secret Santas and your. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that's cool. That's cute. It wasn't at sea, but I worked every Thanksgiving for about 25 years. Ugh. Wow. wow. <laughs> every Thanksgiving. Oh, because that's, wow. that's, you're doing the sports stuff. Yep. And that's like, yeah. that's prime time. Yep. Basketball tournament. Mm. Oh, wow. I worked the same basketball tournament every year for 25 years. Wow. From 1982 to, you name it, there, 2003. Yeah. Every year. Every but you were Thanksgiving. home, like right I near was, then. I was right? in town. Yeah. Yeah. What um, basketball tournament was that? It was called the Great Alaska Shootout. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. so there was good so pre games. Pre was pre-season like tournament. Duke yeah. would come up there. Oh, yeah. We had uh, Division One folks. Uh, Duke and Kentucky and ahead. Arizona. And I wonder if that it. one's still going. Seems like they're it's all not. in, like, nice places now. I mean, not that... In Basically, oh, ESPN <laughs> franchised the preseason uh, tournaments, mm -hmm. and uh, Alaska didn't make the cut because it was expensive to go up there. Mm -hmm. The original reason for going to Alaska and Hawaii for the Maui Classic time uh, slot was that uh, they were uh, they were considered offshore, Crinoid. and the games that you played didn't count towards your uh, preseason number of games and practices that you could have oh, before your season started in uh, Division One. Huh, that makes sense for Hawaii, but not for Alaska. It uh, is on it, shore. Yep, that's true, but it was considered an offshore game. Considered outside of the uh, United States. But that exemption went away. The NCAA closed that loophole. And ESPN franchised uh, all of the preseason tournaments. The Monarch Classic, oh. the Puerto Rico shootout. The yeah, there's Ooh. a lot like in the Caribbean and yep, stuff. Yep, they're so all in nice places now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's the preseason NIT in New York. <laughs> mm -hmm. I always wanted to go to the Maui Classic on Thanksgiving instead of uh, Ooh, stay in Anchorage yeah. and do that, but never got to. But What is happening in the front row? Uh, they're losing you it. You never know. They're <laughs> losing <laughs> it. Yeah, that's one Just of the, the statements from chat. Times ahead support, y'all are losing it. <laughs> yeah. If they really are <laughs> incapacitated, we got to decide what we're going to Hey, do. where did the other TJ go? I think I will take, <laughs> I'll be Herc pilot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, all right, we got some more. Bioturbation going there. It's like more of that worm situation. Yeah. So chat is, um, I've, and I've gotten this question a few times. Um, how are the watches assigned? Is it like, Ooh. Uh, are there like night owls versus day walkers? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're um, you don't get to choose. Right, right but you can attempt to exert influence over the process. So I quite like this watch, so I kind of requested it. Ooh. I get to choose, because I'm the I'm the video department lead, so. Ah. Let's go. I assigned, <laughs> I assigned <laughs> the watches. Yeah, I'd say largely the leads for every department get together and decide oh, which, awesome. uh, <laughs> which watch they want to be on. <laughs> yep. And then around them. They're getting Oreo. Or <laughs> the expedition leads uh, presented me with a list of uh, potential watch uh, assignments, and I said, nope. Do a big X through it, sent it back, and said, here's what I'm going to do. Uh -huh. So there's a bit of seniority in the, in the watch selection. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. What is happening Possibly. with different controls? Possibly. Yeah, so there was a benefit. Oh, wait, no, he just wants to eat his snacks. Oh. <laughs> I thought something special was happening here. At there was. The yeah, dude, we're getting a little. Snacks were requested. <laughs> they were delivered. And now Mike gets to drive her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You might have to uh, give me a quick run through on this. Oh, you didn't get the. Yeah. Nope. Get, no. <laughs> this is your. Uh, we should have both cars. a pullback like an airplane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is your head. That'd be really loud. Grab it by your thumb. Popcorn, down this popcorn, you don't popcorn, Ridley, Hemui, and Mochi Kush. Okay. Oh. 
Oh. And then you can mm -hmm. lateral. Have you guys like tried that? Like that? I'm sorry, I missed it. What was it? Okay. Um, popcorn yeah. with lihi mui powder and mochi yeah. crunch. Yeah. Oh, I like mm -hmm. popcorn with uh, furikake. I want to oh. try that. Yeah. Yes. And then pay attention to that. Tell so you don't run into the bottom. Oh, is that sour or sweet? It's kind of until you get well, used to like Her thing is what sour. Is. My thing is mm -hmm. you'll just keep salty the and savory. I'd say mm -hmm. salty no. and seaweedy. Seaweedy. A seaweedy. seaweedy. <laughs> salty and umami. Interesting. Look for corals. That's <laughs> all the job is. <laughs> Don't hit the bottom and look for <laughs> corals. <laughs> There's nothing. There's rocks. So we do have new viewers tuning in. Um, can you tell us briefly about the terrain we are currently exploring? You bet. So we are on an unnamed seamount uh, here in near the uh, Palmyra uh, and Johnston Atoll area. This is a region of the Pacific called the Line Islands. Uh, there's a whole line of seamounts that goes uh, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of miles. And this one has never been explored before uh, by, you know, modern technology, by humans seeing it. Right. And right now we're coming up the uh, kind of the east side of the seamount and this side of the seamount looks like it experienced a, a major landslide in the past it's kind of a uh, almost looks like a big amphitheater and we're coming up that slope so you're seeing a lot of, so you get kind of fragmental of debris that's come down the slope Move ahead. and we're at currently at uh, around 2,000 meters and when we get about up to 1700 so meters. Ooh, there's a Ooh, cool what, what, uh, what, what this what area? Or sea pig. Full belly. Uh, we get up wow. a little higher, it's going to get a little steeper, and then we're going to move on to the top of the seamount, which is planed off. It's nice and flat because it used to be above sea level and got eroded by the waves before it sank down below sea level. And it sank down because this was a volcano, it was kind of hot and buoyant and as it cooled off and the volcano's long been extinct uh, it's become denser and uh, as a result kind of sinks down further into the into the mantle the rocks you're seeing are probably mostly basalt but also some sedimentary rocks the difficulty is they're all covered with a crust of iron manganese uh, oxyhydroxide, and that's something that precipitates slowly from the seawater, like at a rate of a millimeter per million years. Um, but these are very old volcanoes, uh, as young as 30 million years, as old as 80 million years. And so they've had a long time to accumulate this crust. So we don't actually know what kind of rocks we're picking up until we get them on uh, the ship and, and cut them open and see what's inside. Right. Right. Thank you. So, oh, um, in regards to um, an unnamed seamount, mm -hmm. is there a process by which we name the seamount? Yeah, we, um, there is a process by which seamounts get named, and you right. have to submit the name to a commission, and, and it goes through a series of approvals. Um, I don't think we're really in the seamount naming business, you right. know, like it's not that important to me to put a name on it, right? Uh, except that sometimes when you're writing <laughs> a Up scientific forever. paper about it, it's, you know, it's better not to have to just keep saying unnamed seamount, you know, so sometimes right. it's useful to have a name, but, uh, but uh, there, there are others who, you know, if they want to name them, they can, but, you know, we define them basically by where they are on the planet, you know, their latitude and longitude, and that's uh, that's good enough for us. Awesome, thank you. But for the low price of <laughs> $10 million, <laughs> we will go through the naming process for you. Did I not say a big enough number? One hundred. <laughs> One hundred million, million dollars, chat. Dollars.
auction, silent auction coming soon <laughs> <laughs> for the CMOs. <laughs> It's like NASA that you can buy stars. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure that's right. not NASA who's doing that. Is that, that. NASA? It's <laughs> no, that's like it's not. Maybe it's not official. I think it's kind of like an NASA. infomercial. Oh. Infomercial. <laughs> that's right. And then I saw you could buy like, oh, you can <laughs> get a star, your own star, for like fifty bucks. Yeah. Okay. I would. I would save your money. Right. You could make your own certificate though. You could make your own certificate. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I got to make our our rock saw mastery certificates. Yes. Yep, no, that's a <laughs> International Astronomical Union. International Astronomical Union. That's, that's also Owls, look like a like small the, association. Yeah, Ship Move Association <laughs> in America. <laughs> The small association can auction this. <laughs> yeah, waypoints. Naming. Waypoints. waypoints? <laughs> yes. We got we got local <laughs> peak. Waypoints. <laughs> uh, science, are you wanting to keep moving? Yep. Yeah. Good to move, RV. Good to move. Bridge nav. Yeah, we have. Three zero meters, zero five five. Yeah, we have chat saying, thank you for the information, Adam, and go Ducks. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> who is that? Who are you, chat? <laughs> uh, who knows that I'm a, I'm a duck? <laughs> and then question on the eDNA. So when you get a water sample, how old would the DNA be? Would it be what has been in the area recently? Or could it have been something like whale DNA from hundreds of miles away? That's brought a, in that's by a underwater good question. <laughs> yeah, the idea is that it is representative of the biology in the surrounding water. Right. Um, but. Yeah, the DNA degrades with time. And so, but we're still learning a lot about right. what it means wh when we s sample the eDNA. And for the most part, the DNA that is recovered in those samples is not identifiable. It's mm -hmm. small fragments of DNA and we don't have the catalog in place to, you know, to identify every bit that, that gets measured. Right. And there's really interesting questions about how much water do you have to filter in mm. order to get a representative sample. So there's been number of studies where they, you know, filter a liter, five liters, 10 liters, 50 liters to see how far you have to go before you get a representative sample. Quid pro Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> Quid pro. <laughs> uh, there was popcorn and popcorn. chips, but. It was it pre popped? Post popped? No, it was uh, pre popped. Popcorn and chips are kind of frowned upon in the that's, yeah. That's where in I the was van. Like, uh, Popcorn you. and chips? Not in the van, so we oh, don't yeah, take crumbs right, right. all over. Wow! And then our friend Moya from New Zealand, uh, you haven't e you haven't eaten popcorn until you've eaten it with vanilla ice cream. Ooh, what? That sounds Ooh. weird that's and that's delicious. Sound, what? That huh. sounds your way. way to go, Moya. I've never heard of that. I combination like French fries before. and ice cream. Yeah. You know. Right, yeah, yeah. So what I really want, and this goes all the way back to s things that don't smell good but smell good. <laughs> <laughs> I really like buttermilk. Do we have to go back? <laughs> and I think there should be buttermilk? a buttermilk ice cream. Oh wow! I think that would be good. I Interesting. Uh, um. I don't know. I like when you can taste that the pancakes are buttermilky. Mm -hmm. That's true. I love the smell of buttermilk. I don't know about ice cream, like though. That just sounds kind of like sour train. cream, almost. Get it in the mm. picture. Turn what? Yeah. Frame, frame it up. The, frame up the holothery in there. Practice run. That's what the camera do? No, just drive. Get it. Get the lasers on it, basically. Yeah. And then there's that all-important phrase. 
Let's go. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, can we zoom? <laughs> Dave, can we zoom? <laughs> Dave, can we zoom? <laughs> then it gets tricky. Gonna give him a Dave, can we zoom? Yeah. <laughs> Dave, can we zoom? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so wait to hear it from the man himself. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, fire the lasers. <laughs> <laughs> pew, pew, pew. pew. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's done. <laughs> if you're planning, you can use the, the camera to pan and tilt. Okay. I always think of um, nice. Austin nice Powers. He's a natural. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is definitely, have you ever done this before? Nope. Wow. <laughs> Austin Powers. Yeah. Yeah, because Dr. Top. Evil has this laser, and he's like, yeah. It sounds like Jules is fading, too. It's a very respectable, uh, <laughs> 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 All right, yeah. guys, we got to fire it up. We got to, we got how much time? We got an hour and a half. Yeah, they don't like right. looking at these things. Hour, hour of power. Here we go. All Ethereans aren't preserved well. Really? Yeah, the morphology is just really... Okay, we're moving. Bridge, Nav. Uh, three zero meters, zero five five. So no one got my laser reference? Uh... Austin Powers? Yeah, I've seen that movie. Okay. Laser sharks with laser beams. Um, I don't think I have. Did I not get it? No. Darn. I feel like I'm not supposed to get that one because I'm. That's supposed to be. Oh yeah. You're supposed older to be older generation. You're supposed to be the serious one on this watch. Um. <laughs> we need some adult supervision. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Who's the older generation? <laughs> I'm not sure if there are any adults on this watch. I'm not sure if there's anyone over the age of 13 on this watch. <laughs> it's hard to say if there's anyone over the age of 13 on this ship right now. To be honest, <laughs> we've all digressed. Oh, and this is a question for you, Adam. Mm. So how many years of dedicated study does it take to become a comedic scientist? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. Scientist. It's, uh, no, it's partly a serious <laughs> question, as I find that as a teacher, humor is an important part of the learning experience. Aww. Oh, that's interesting. It's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, get, you have to hone it a little bit. I don't know. I think... Uh, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> really, you got nothing? Well, <laughs> I'm a comedic genius. Is I don't. Speechless. Well, I don't think that I uh, required training for making smart, elegy comments. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was. He was just born funny. Is <laughs> what he's saying. <laughs> I need to resell the DVD. But I do like humor. Makes makes stuff accessible. I think. Right. I think that's right. And when you see some of the na scientific names that people have chosen, <laughs> I think other people <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they do the work for you. <laughs> the Yoda Purpurata. <laughs> some things just present themselves. So on our dives, um, we don't plan any mid-water dives, right? It's just um, deep sea. A deep dives that we planned? On this expedition, but oh, there have okay. been times in the past where where this ROV and others have done midwater dives. But one of the things that we've uh, kind of helped to develop within the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute is a an autonomous underwater vehicle specifically for the midwater because one of oh, the challenges, right. you know, uh, Jules mentioned that there's lots of critters that 
are disturbed by our presence that we don't even see, that's an even bigger issue in the midwater. There's avoidance behavior and you're right. trying to capture something that has, you know, the unlimited degrees of freedom to move away from you. Um, but this, so this AUV is designed to be very quiet and um, very and turbo dark. Boost. And turbo boost. <laughs> turbo and, boost. Uh, <laughs> and collect the kinds of samples and observations that are particularly suited for the midwater. So one of the capabilities it has is to focus in on a organism, like a floating uh, plankton, for example, uh, and follow it, like m oh, match its okay. movements to keep it, you know, to keep being able to observe it yeah. using like AI, basically. That's so cool. Oh, speaking of AI, um, it's one of the questions from chat. Um, will, will AI be ever used to identify species instead of... For sure. You know? Yeah, that's going on, you know, kind Bridge, of currently yeah. there's a lot of development in that area. Then, And kind of like the eDNA where it's, you know, the library right. for comparison is a problem, that's the ch challenge for AI. You have to have a lot of observations that are um, you know ID'd correctly but also in different stages of growth and from different angles and with different lighting so that that the machine learning algorithm has the best chance to to identify it but we we have a new machine learning algorithm that we're piloting on this cruise to automatically extract highlight images or oh, highlight okay. video clips and um, and my graduate student Pooja Banerjee developed this and I've been testing it out and it works remarkably well so once you have a good training data set um, then you start to see the power of these systems really right wow that's amazing and this is oh wow this is in regards to Hercules <laughs> um, when is Hercules going to have telepresence, they want to take turn, take turns um, controlling it. I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, that has rock. has it happened? Yeah, in the past. It, what? Yeah, so there's really nothing. Well, the things that make that challenging are that the folks on shore are seeing the video stream, but they're not seeing it in real time. Right. Um, Fish. So Fish. There's a there's a latency. And it would be the same the other direction too. If you sent a command saying go up, it would take, a f you know, even a few seconds is, can make a difference. Right, right. Um, oh, nice. Fish. Cuskiel? Mm -hmm. Cuskiel. You have to give Dave the word if you're going to look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Can you zoom in? Oh, <laughs> oh, Atalanta. <laughs> There's something yellow that. Oh. Something like fly by? Yeah, yeah. That was extremely yellow. Yeah, they've also used AI for um, like for video annotation and also for like identifying corals using um, 3D photogrammetry. So taking um, like images of a reef and then using those and AI to to identify things. Wow. I'm good on you this. You're gonna go get fish. your own snacks yep. now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've lost your job. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> Chat, we are currently 20, 45 meters.
What speed have we been doing these moves at? Uh, 0 0.3. Okay. Between 2 and 3. Yeah, 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. Oh, Connor says that was a macro urid, not a cusk eel. Oh. oh. Mm. Macro. Unfortunately, I don't have any room left in my brain for a new <laughs> <laughs> species. Cusk eel it is. Oh, <laughs> cusk eel it is. <laughs> Sorry, Connor. Thank you for the. <laughs> oh, it looks like that. Connor's doing some heavy lifting on this watch. Thanks, Connor. You get over there. Do you spell hmm? it? You need to get back over there. I don't know what macro you got. Okay. Starboard. Uh, to starboard. Yeah. You need to get in front, too. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, grenadier. Or rat tail. Rat tail. Rat tail I can keep in there, yeah. <laughs> I like rat tails. They have big eyes. So this kind of stuff is much more interesting than doing uh, mid-water transects. I was uh, on a ship for six weeks where we did all mid-water transects with the ROV. Ooh. Oh, wow. wow. Uh, in six weeks, I saw the bottom twice. How much life did you see? We saw lots and lots and lots of stuff. Yeah, see, that's the thing, is that I'm, I'm a big midwater person. I could do it all day. Jellies, tina fours, siphonophores, squid, wow. squid yeah. you name it, we yep. saw it. And so, Amazing. But it's, you know, hours of boredom and moments of excitement. Yeah. Mm. Uh, that kind of stuff. But, yeah, I saw the bottom twice in, uh, in six weeks. Wow. And it was down to the bottom. Oh, there's the bottom. Okay, come up 10 meters and start the transect. <laughs> <laughs> Run away from the bottom. Yep. Like a primnoid, right? Uh, from here on out, everything is a uh, primnoid. <laughs> I am not going to get down to genus. It's a lot more nuanced than I thought. <laughs> Where did you see the primnoid? It was back there a little bit. Do we have AUVs or? On the ship right now? No. Okay. But, but okay. Um, but there are uh, lots of them in the kind of ocean research community. That's another from Noah right here. And we're hoping to have one called Sentry on board next year. Oh, wow. Sentry. Wouldn't you call a Mesobot an AUV as well? Yes, yes. Or did you already talk about Mesobot? I did talk about okay. Mesobot, but yeah. I, uh, and we'll also have later this year, uh, so we'll have Mesobot on, and then the Drix vehicle, which is an AUV is an autonomous underwater vehicle, and Drix has some similarities. It's an uncrewed surface vehicle. So it's not necessarily autonomous, you know, is still controlled by humans, but there's no people on it. It's a robot going around on the surface. Are AUVs specifically used for midwater or can they be used? No, there's there, that one is kind of unique for being midwater. A lot of them are uh, meant not be on the seafloor, but oh, closer okay. to it and and looking at it acoustically okay. or with optical imagery yeah, or, right. or uh, geophysical measurements. Por arriba. 
<laughs> Put up you. Oh, there's a. Ooh, what's that? Going upstairs. What we got here? <laughs> oh, good thing you circled it so many times. <laughs> Emphasis. I bet it's a Chrysogorgid. The ship just finished the move, so we've got time here. Up close and personal. You got to say the, the, the magic words to Dave. Zoom in there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Chrysogorgia Janiculata. Are you going to sing your song, Adam? Chrysogorgia Janiculata. <laughs> Thank you. Uh. <laughs> okay, we got to keep going. Get zipping. Okay. It's also a stick of pathies in my view, but not in that camera. Do we see it here? Uh, no. We already passed it. Oh. Samantha, do you have hope we will be able to arrive at waypoint two <laughs> on our watch? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, you can no. do it. We're tomorrow morning. Hang yeah, in maybe there. tomorrow. Maybe <laughs> tomorrow's watch. <laughs> tomorrow morning's watch. Uh, yeah, no, we've got 680 meters. Oh wow! And oh. we have an hour left. Hour and 15 minutes. Only an hour if Adam decides he wants another rock. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Robert, you need to find the bottom bottom. Oh, there's the... Look, there's oh. a sponge. Bull the Sacocalyx. 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 Yeah, that one. <laughs> or actually, maybe it's a Bolosoma. Let me zoom. Zoom in there, Dave. Looks more like a Bolosoma to me, actually. Look at Sorry. my sponge list. You gotta oh, be careful of the, see the cameras sticking yeah. out there. When you get pointy rocks like that, you gotta watch out. So, Jules, what is the key difference between those two species that make you decide that's a bolosoma? Um, Psychocalyx seems to have a lumpier outside. Okay. Yeah, and, okay, hold on. I'll be able to just describe it better if we get closer. I'm does actually it? not really sure yeah, how to explain it. Like <clears throat> I do still think it's Bolosoma. What are you doing this, Robert? Are you trying to so use the camera? a little bit like that half moony thing. It's better to just fly. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, see this. What happens when you're zoomed in like Is it the that? cavity? You'll, you'll the find difference yourself there? like drifting away yeah, from it. There's okay. it just, oh, it's like yeah. There's... Oh, yeah. That's what it looks like. Like the side? Yeah. I think we're not seeing the <laughs> I'm camera. using my hands to explain Cut things. So I've run out of thoughts. Yeah. No worries. There's like a hole in the side. Gotcha. Yeah. You're doing a good. couple more bamboos. And then yeah, you're doing great. Yeah, with the <laughs> sacrocalyx. I think you're doing pretty okay. The <laughs> hole gotta, is just in the top. It looks more general. like a cup. Yeah. So and then it it's the like lumpier on Light the outside. The the texture. Like more cylindrical, but also lumpier. But so you gotta get Connor one. said, Pac-Man on a stock. Pac-Man on a stock. Pac-Man on a stock. Yes, chat. Um, the current posted, the posted current watch is correct. Is it? Yep. That's us. That's us. <laughs> oh no, TJ's there. TJ's. Oh. What do you mean? He's it's TJ on watch instead of Mike. With us. Yeah. TJ yeah. isn't Mike's missing here? out on his glory. TJ's not here. Oh, yeah. We upgraded. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't tell TJ. So yeah, don't get used to it. <laughs> Put this tape on here. This is horrible. Tape on it. Ugh. What's happening? Somebody put electrical tape on the stick or the controls. Oh. Is 
So I feel like we're maybe transitioning into a little more life up here. You think? It's slow, but I'm starting to see more <coughs> of the yeah, whips. Yeah, that's true. I've seen some sponges. I want to go back to sponge land. That was really cool. That was really fun. Yes. Oh, there's another bamboo whip to our left. We don't have to look at it. Um, and some now would be the time to look at anything. Or not Norella. Primnoids. Primnoids, yeah. I yep. don't dare go down to genus anymore. You want me to look at a Crinoids? Yeah, science, this um, is the time to look if there's no, anything. No, no, I, I think we ought to keep no. moving or we'll yeah, keep moving. I don't really have anything to look at. Okay, are you ready to keep moving? Great. Uh, ready to go ahead mm -hmm. and move. Bridge now. Yeah. Three zero meters, zero six zero. It's another bamboo whip we just passed. We'll just... Slight so bearing change. Your, yeah, you should bring your head around a little bit. More on the heading. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is a question for our ROV pilots. Can you tell us more about ROV Hercules? Uh, does it get any improvements or new features every couple of years? Uh, yeah, we just we just had a big upgrade where we replaced the frame because it was it was uh, getting pretty beat up, had a lot of cracks in it. And uh, we'd patched it over the years, but it was time. So we got a little bit bigger frame and added some height to the front. So it makes it easier to sample. Um, hopefully going to get new electronics for it over the winter this, this year. Got some new foam on there. New foam. Yeah. Looks much nicer than it did. Uh, How long did it take to um, build Big Herc? Uh, it took us two months to to move everything over to the new frame. Oh, so that's okay. pretty much stripping it down. Yeah, oh, wow. stripping okay. it to the frame and rebuilding it was like two months of work. Uh, I would think that the original, I wasn't around for the original build of it, but it was probably around six months of work wow. for f three or four people. Did we just pass? No. Got Can a you? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, there's a, oh, crinoid. Sorry, Annie, continue. No, no you're fine. Okay. important. Um, and can you elaborate on the differences between, um, Hercules and Atalanta, Atalanta and Argus, please. Um, so we have a two-body system, a two-body ROV system, which means uh, we have two ROVs in the water at the same time. Uh, Argus and Atalanta are interchanged, and they act as a, as a kind of a clump weight sort of ROV on the end of the main wire, and it it's used to uh, kind of isolate the ship's motion right. from Hercules. So from Argus or Atalanta down to Hercules is a uh, neutrally buoyant tether. You can see it's a yellow tether. Sometimes you can see it if you're looking on the upper monitors there. <coughs> and uh, Hercules is the, you know, the main ROV that we do all the sampling with. It has the manipulators. Uh, what else do we need to say about that? Oh. Sorry, I wasn't listening. That covers <laughs> it. Um, <Yeah. laughs> I think you did great. Yeah. And then Hercules can dive oh, to about oh, something. Oh, oh, what is that? Oh, it's huge. What? It's a big is that a holothurian? Yeah. Uh, big it's a one. huge holothurian. What? <laughs> Did Chat, Big Herc can dive to about 4,000 meters. Atalanta can dive deeper, about 6,000. And thanks, viewers, who noted that our watch was off. I just updated the watch, so now Mike is officially on watch. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. 